Welcome to all the brothers and sisters in the world. I'm Brother RJ and I have Sister M beside me here. Shalom, brothers and sisters. So, brothers and sisters, we have arrived at part 66 of this series we are doing. And it's on the lifting up of the Saviour, the only begotten Son of the Most High, to come. So, at the end of the last video... Brothers and sisters, we had uh, we had done chapter four of Hebrews. That was the very last chapter we done in the last video. We'll be starting on in, in this one at chapter five. But before we we go there, as always, we start with a prayer to put up to the Father. And Sister M has decided. To, to do Psalm 41. So over to you, Sister M. <clears throat> Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Father will deliver him in time of trouble. The Father will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Father will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Father, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my heart. An evil disease, say they, say, say they cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, Mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Father, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. But by this I know that thou favourest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. <coughs> And as for me, thou upholdeth me in mine integrity, and setteth me before thy face for ever. Blessed be the most high power of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. So be it, and so be it. So be it, so be it. So, brothers and sisters, that was a good way to start us off in this video. Uh, before we go to Hebrews chapter 5, that we'll be starting off uh, when it comes to the scriptures uh, of the book of Hebrews that we're doing in this video. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, just to say, if you want to follow us, uh, as always, we are doing chapter by chapter. Uh, if you've got a King James Bible, all well and good, and you can follow us that way. If you don't, uh, and you want to, to follow us as we're going, you could get a Bible app uh, uh, on your phone, uh, download a Bible app on the phone, or, of course, uh, the other way of doing it is through a laptop, if you have a laptop as well. So, with that being said, brothers and sisters, uh, we will uh, get straight to Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1 and over to Sister M. For every high priest taketh from among men is ordained for men ordained for men in things pertaining to the Father that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Yep. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. Yeah, and brothers and sisters, you know, in this world, 
each and every single one of us were, were sinners, brothers and sisters. You know, the our, our saviour uh, was the one that really, brothers and sisters, uh, was unblemished. He, he was the one, brothers and sisters, our saviour, our messiah, our shepherd king, he was the one that brought to us the word of the Father. He, he brought us the understanding of the Father through him when he came, brothers and sisters. And, you know, we, we in this world, brothers and sisters, we can't uh, be looking at doing things by ourselves we we ourselves uh, know fine well our sister M and myself absolutely that we can do nothing brothers and sisters as we have read in the book of John we can do nothing of ourselves because we we need the saviour we know brothers and sisters that you know we we can't bear forth this great fruit we can't be bringing the people to the saviour we we can't be uh, justifying the father through the son by by doing it all ourselves we need them brothers and sisters and you know the father wants his ones his ones that brothers and sisters he has chosen he wants his brothers and sisters that he's chosen to actually bring about what needs to be done give the word give the understanding of the truth that needs to get done but it's to understand brothers and sisters it's been ordained by the father for certain ones to be doing this and to give gifts and sacrifices for their sins to have compassion on the ignorant why 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 to have compassion on the ignorant ignorant because they are out of the way they are actually brothers and sisters out of the way now what does that mean our saviour is is the way the truth and the life so to understand that they are they are out of the way but brothers and sisters everybody needs to be in the way and you know if we think of the disciples in times going by the saviour went plucked all these these ones out these disciples the father had decided upon them of course from the very beginning because actually the father knows the beginning from the end so it was always going to be these disciples were going to come in and be doing the work and they were doing the work. They were going to be doing the work of the Saviour. Yeah. The Father gave to the Son to give to us. So they were always going to be doing that work. But it's to understand they've been plucked out. They've been chosen to do it. And brothers and sisters, that's what people need to understand out there. That all your your ministers, your priests, your your elders your they are doing everything by themselves they are giving what they want to give by themselves it's to understand the truth brothers and sisters we understand the truth from the new testament back to the old testament back to the new te we understand the truth brothers and sisters yeah, but that's not enough for us. That's not enough. It's it's good to understand. It's good to be wanting to give. 
But that is a, as we have already established, brothers and sisters, it's when you understand the truth. Yeah? That's like the milk. But it's the it's the father through the son that gives the increase. It's the saviour, brothers and sisters, that told us. He told us. If you understand my words and my saying, I and my father will come and abode with your vessel. So, you know, the father chooses who he decides to choose. And that has been from the beginning. But brothers and sisters, these particular ones have to. They have to sacrifice themselves for the cause. These what these scriptures are really talking about. They have to sacrifice themselves for the cause. And yes, the Father, just like the disciples, they sacrificed themselves for the cause because they were chosen to bring the Word. They were chosen to bring the Word of the Father through his son. Yeah? That's what they were chosen to do. They were ordained. And brothers and sisters, in this generation, as it was back then with the Saviour, the disciples, the ones that they brought in, etc, etc. Brothers and sisters, it's to know and understand. And we will, we will, sh we will show this even more in the books to come. That actually, there is a set elect. There is a set elect for today that have been chosen from the beginning to be brought in, brought in in this generation. Yes, brothers and sisters, brought in in this generation to be doing what they are supposed to do. Just like the disciples. Yeah? To be understanding the truth. To be baptised, yeah? And, and, to be filled. For the Father and the Son to come and abode with their vessel, yeah? And, be then put out to works. Because we've got many nations, many nations of people, brothers and sisters, to bring to the truth. So, it's to understand that we can do nothing of ourselves. Yes, we can be given the understanding which we have from the Father, through the Son, through wisdom, through un getting and, and s having understanding of the truth, of the written word. But that is not enough. You need to be baptised to be led by the Spirit so that you are able then to bear forth fruit. Bring people to the Saviour. Take the word of the Most High out. Take that word out and give his word. And you know, brothers and sisters, that is, all, that is what it's all about. Because when the Father created us, He's the Father, He's the Creator, He's the Omnipotent, He's the Always Been, we're the creation. And when He decided everything that was to happen, it was the Word that did it. The Word. Just as brothers and sisters, when we speak and we want to, to say direct somebody to be doing something the words come out of our mouth it was the same with the father brothers and sisters what he said went and it was through the word the word of him that actually brought it all to bear our, our saviour yeah the word that was made flesh the word the Father's words through the Word that was made flesh and dwell amongst us, brothers and sisters. So, you know, 
You want to be one of those that has been chosen for that purpose, for, should I say, for this purpose, to be given of the Father's words, given of the understanding yeah, that's needed for people. The Saviour taught the Gospel of the Kingdom, but we know, brothers and sisters, it's His Word that has to come out of our mouths. It's His Word at the Saviour, brothers and sisters. And the Father through the Son has the plan for today and how everything has to be put together. Everything's going to happen, brothers and sisters. But it's got to start just like it started with the Saviour going to the disciples. It has to start somewhere. It has to start somewhere in this generation. Because I'll put this to you brothers and sisters. One man as in Paul and we've been going through Paul's epistles. We have been going through Paul's epistles, brothers and sisters. And that one man was plucked out by the Saviour. By our Saviour. Specifically. To go to the nations and preach the word. To preach the gospel of the kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word of the Father through and in the Son. And that is exactly what Paul did. Yeah? And he was one man. And he brought in who he brought in. And they brought in who they brought in. And brothers and sisters. It only takes one. And the, you know. The Saviour. Has already shown us that. Just one. And I can have. Or I could have the whole world. The whole world. I, the Messiah, not me brothers and sisters, but the Messiah is telling us he can have the whole world in his hands. He can have the whole world in his hands by through just one. One being in the Spirit. One being led by the Spirit. One, brothers and sisters. Just one. Because Paul actually showed us that. And you know, going back to the book of John, the Father tells us through the Son, I did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. I have sent the Son into the world through and basically, brothers and sisters, in him, the world can be saved. And you know, it is the truth and the whole truth, brothers and sisters, and actually nothing but the truth. And that is what everyone needs to understand. It's not what people have been taught through the church system, through the religious system. It's the truth having the true saviour that everybody needs and it's to understand that from the beginning the father saw the beginning to the end and there's ones that have been chosen for today and brothers and sisters sister em and myself as we're going through the books and there's other books to come we will show you we will show you the understanding of that because it is in the scriptures brothers and sisters okay but to then sister M if you could carry on please and by reason hereof he ought as for the people so also for himself to offer for sins mm -hmm. and no man taketh this honour unto himself but he that it but he that is called of the Most High, as was Aaron. And you know, and Aaron was, brothers and sisters, Aaron was called to be one of those 
for what, brothers and sisters? To to get direction from the word of the Father. To get direction from the word, our Saviour. To get direction from that word. And that word was within Aaron. That word, the words of the Father, what the Father wanted to happen, the prophecy that was to take place back then with Moses and Aaron, he put the words in their mouth. He put the words, the word, the words in his mouth. And exactly what he wanted Aaron to say. You see how deep that is, brothers and sisters? You know, and that was the Father. The Father knows everything. The Father knows everything. Does he know it, Sister M, from the beginning to the end? The Father knows what each and every single one of us are going to do on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on a minute basis. Brothers and sisters, it is to, to know and to understand that we cannot and we should not take any honour and glory away from our Father through his Son. We cannot. We just can't. And that's why, brothers and sisters, too many people out there are preaching what they want to preach. Too many people are preaching exactly what they want to preach. But you know what, brothers and sisters? They don't have the Saviour. They don't have the true Saviour. They do not have the true Saviour within and they are not being led by the Spirit. Yeah? And you know, brothers and sisters, that really is... This is for, and this understanding is for everybody, but any priests, ministers, elders, anybody out there listening to this video, I say to each and every one of you, take heed over this. Because you do not want the wrath of the Father through the Saviour coming against you. And it's the, it, it is basically, brothers and sisters, as we know, it's the Saviour you need to worry about. It is really the Saviour every need, buddy needs to be concerned about because he's going to judge you. He is going to judge you. Unless you're a non-believer and don't believe that the Father even created for you in the first place and you're damned already and you will go to the lake of fire if you keep on on that tact. Non-believing brothers and sisters completely get people going to the lake of fire. But not that we want that for any one of the women seed brothers and sisters. Carry on with verse 5, Sister M. So... So also the Saviour glorified not himself to be made a high priest. The Saviour did not glorify himself, brothers and sisters. Carry on, Sister M. To be made a high priest. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Yeah, the, and you know, the Father said... You know, when the Saviour was baptised, brothers and sisters, and, you know, he, you know, he received, as he come up from the water, he received 
the spirit of the father that came down as a dove brother like a dove to him brothers and sisters you know and the father says this is my son this is my son who I am well pleased with and he is and or should I say was and still is the only begotten of the father and brothers and sisters when he got resurrected back up went to the father came back down and he was glorified by the father he was glorified by the father completely glorified by the father brothers and sisters and then he breathed as we read in book of John he breathed whew, and his disciples there you go my disciples you have life you have life why brothers and sisters because the glorified saviour who did what he did that was given the keys to death and hell by the father he was given the keys to the kingdom he was given the keys to the kingdom he is the way that everybody needs to go he is the truth that everybody needs the disciples had it they received it and they also received life because you know why brothers and sisters because the saviour told them you will be with me in the kingdom you will be judging with me the tribes of Israel so they already knew brothers and sisters what was going to happen but the saviour was giving them at all they gave them life he gave them truth the disciples he gave them life he gave them of him he gave them the spirit of truth that brought them to all truth when the saviour went up to be with the father I will get my father to send down a spirit in my name in my name that will bring you to everything that I have given you and all truth they were given brothers and sisters all truth everything that was to get done and much more much much more yeah and brothers and sisters that is what it is when you're a, an ordained one that has been chosen by the father for a purpose to do what to bring his truth because his word is truth it's the word brothers and sisters that's truth you know and our saviour tells us he tells us that we have read it we have read it in the book of John we have read it in what is it chapter 7 sister M in the, in the book of John yes. the prayer the prayer that he prayed oh, chapter 17 sorry okay. chapter 17 Mm -hmm. the sister M has corrected me there thank you sister M yeah so brothers and sisters chapter 17 that we have read in the book of John yeah and our saviour tells us he tells us brothers and sisters he tells us what does he tell us that the word is truth that is exactly what he tells his brothers and sisters and you know just on that point that prayer that prayer in the book of John chapter 17 that the saviour prayed up to the father before he was going to get taken to be crucified brothers and sisters 
it is deep. It is very deep. And in an actual fact, it would be actually, brothers and sisters, a good prayer to put up to the Father. Because, you know, the words that we put up to the Father, especially if they are scriptural, they will not come back to us void, brothers and sisters. They will not come back to us void. The Father, we would reckon, would delight in that completely, especially when we put Psalms up to him as well, brothers and sisters. Yep. Okay, carry on, Sister M. So also the Saviour glorified not himself, but he made a high priest. But he that said unto him, Oh, sorry, I'll read that again. So also the Saviour glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son today, have I begotten thee? As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yes, as it said, so, so also the Saviour glorified not himself, he was made a high priest, but he had he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever. Thou art a priest. You are a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek. Now, the order of Melchizedek, brothers and sisters, Melchizedek, the Zedek is my king, king of righteousness. Yeah? Melchizedek was an angel of the order of virtues, you know, brothers and sisters. He, a celestial virtue of great grace, who does for heavenly angels and virtue what the Saviour does for man. Now, how do we understand that? That is a description of Melchizedek from the Book of Angels. This is the Dictionary of Angels, including the following angels by Gustav Davidson, brothers and sisters. Now, that is a description of Melchizedek. Yeah? An angel of the order of virtues. You know? So, forever a high priest. Thou art a priest forever after. After the order of Melchizedek. So, Melchizedek, an order of the virtues. Uh, he was, he was, uh, he was, he was brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, an angel, as I say, of the order of virtues. And what the heavenly angels, what he, he does for the heavenly angels and virtues, that's what the Saviour does for man. So, the Saviour, brothers and sisters, he was made lesser than the angels. The word that was made flesh and dwelt amongst us was made lesser than the angels. So that's how we understand forever. You know, uh, in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So you've got order of virtues, angelic, and of course the Saviour. The Saviour was made lesser than the angels. He was the word that was made flesh that dwelt amongst us, but he was made lesser than the angels. So that is how you understand that actually he was here and was made lesser than the angels, brothers and sisters, to be absolutely that one that was going to do for men. He was going to give truth. He was going to give the word of truth down here in this level to men. The understanding of the Father through his Son, through our Messiah, our Shepherd King. 
and brothers and sisters, he was going around doing it like what? You and me. That's parading about in this earth. He was made lesser than the angels. Yeah? Carry on, sister M. Who, <clears throat> who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. He learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Carry on, Sister M. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Now, brothers and sisters, this is an important scripture. You know, these these verses in the book of Hebrews are very deep. Yeah, so he was a son, yet he learned. He was the son of the father. He he was made lesser than the angels. He was like you and me. He was he was flesh, brothers and sisters. Flesh and blood. He was made lesser than the angels. Yet he learned obedience. Oh boy, did he. He learned obedience. By the things which he suffered. And he was made perfect. He was made perfect. He was made perfect by our Father. He taught the word. He gave the word of the Father. He gave it out. He gave that understanding of the Father. The gospel of the kingdom. He gave it out. He gave it, brothers and sisters. And he was made perfect. Our Messiah, our Shepherd King. And he became the author. He was the author of eternal salvation. He was the author of the alter, he was the of, author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So all that want to have salvation, all that want to have salvation, have to come through our Saviour and in our Saviour, brothers and sisters, because to want and have that salvation, to want and have eternal salvation, is to have the Saviour, is to have the Saviour within, and it's obeying Him, and it is obeying Him. If you, brothers and sisters, have to obey someone, you have to be directed so that you can obey. You can comply with what you have to do to be directed. And to be directed by the Saviour. To obey the Saviour. To have the Saviour. To have the Saviour within, working within you. That's how you can get salvation. That's how you can endure to the end. That's how you can be in that kingdom, that thousand year reign with the Saviour, to come, brothers and sisters. To come. And be like a Noah. Because Noah lived to over 900 years old, brothers and sisters. Noah lived um, a, a, an enormously big age. Yeah? Guess what? If you 
want salvation. This is how you obtain it. And guess what? You can be with the Saviour, our Shepherd King, for a thousand years. Yeah? Now, would that not be what everybody would want? And all the Saviour wants is for you to have him, understand his truth, have him within, obey him, obey his directions, and you will have what? Eternal life with him in the everlasting kingdom to come. Yeah? Carry on, Sister M. <coughs> And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Yeah. Ca mm -hmm. Called of the Father, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. The high priest that was called by the Father after, not before, as we've just said, but after the order of Melchizedek. Carry on, Sister M. Of whom... We have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Dull of hearing. Seeing ye are all. Ye are dull of hearing. And brothers and sisters, in this world, people have been under the spirit of error. They have been in complete error. Lacking understanding. Lacking understanding of the true Saviour. Lacking understanding of the Word. And the Saviour is the Word. The Word of the Father. Having the true Saviour. Yeah, the understanding of the true Saviour. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. For when, from the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have one to teach you that needs to teach you again. That needs to teach you again. And what is that, Sister M? <clears throat> Which be the first principles of the oracles of the Father, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. Brothers and sisters, to be taught the principle of the oracles of the Most High, to be taught the milk, to be given the milk, To be given the milk. Yeah. Now, as a baby, you can't go straight to the strong meat. You've got to have the milk first before you get to the solids. You've got to have the baby milk first before you can get to the solids. Yeah. So... It's the same with the Word. It's the same with the understanding of the Word. And you need that milk. You need that grounding. You need that for you need that foundation. Yeah. You need that foundation, brothers and sisters. And you know we can understand the word. We can understand the written word from the scriptures. We can understand the gospel of the kingdom. We can kind of be getting out of error and actually 
understand brothers and sisters but you know what none of us even when we do have that and we do see that and we do have that should I say we are still all sinners we are all brothers and sisters none of us none of us are righteous none of us are righteous the understanding of the, the word, the written word, the gospel of the kingdom, that is from the Father because so many people in this world are in error. That comes from the Father through wisdom, operating with you and giving you understanding, brothers and sister, sisters, because wisdom, the spirit of wisdom is understanding. You know, so if you understand the written word, wisdom has been involved in giving you understanding. Yeah? But, look at verse 13, Sister M. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. And we are, brothers and sisters, uses milk is unskillful everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe and you know we are babes we are babes and you know actually even when brothers and sisters you understand as I have said the the written word that the Saviour brings. Even when you understand the gospel of the kingdom, even when you understand from that what it is that you have to do, yeah? Even when you have all of that, yeah? Understanding of the written word, even if you, even when you do have that, you're still a babe. You are, you're not, you're not some brilliant prophet you're not some brilliant oh look at me I am oh I am this brilliant elder this brilliant teacher I am this eh uh, almost making yourself out to be of prophet status no we are babes we are babes brothers and sisters yeah Maybe with understanding, but brothers and sisters, we are still very, very small. And it's to understand that when it comes to, yeah, even though understanding truth, we're still small. But brothers and sisters, it's to understand that, yeah, we need the Father through the Son. The Son tells us that. We can do nothing without them. They tell us that. Yeah? That's what they tell us. You know, and the great works can't be done without them. Let's look at verse 14, Sister M. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Yeah, and strong meat belongeth to them that are full age. Yeah. Full age. Those who have reason of the use have their senses exercised to discern what good is and evil is. And brothers and sisters, yeah. Understanding the truth. Understanding, you know, the difference between good and evil. We know, brothers and sisters, that actually we, we cannot, we cannot Nobody, nobody can be what they think 
is perfection. Nobody can be what they think is. They are perfected. Without the Father and the Son aboding with the vessel. Nobody but nobody that is a teacher, preacher, minister, elder can think their cells. Can think their cells is perfect in any way, brothers and sisters. Without without the Saviour actually being with them, actually working with them, brothers and sisters. Yeah? Okay, carry on to chapter 6, Sister M. <clears throat> Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of the Saviour. So, the doctrine of the Saviour, leaving the principles... Now, it doesn't say here that, uh, you know, the doctrine of the Saviour, it's not telling us here, brothers and sisters, that this doctrine, this understanding of the Messiah, that actually we should just disregard, it's not saying that we should disregard it, have nothing to do with it, the Saviour brought what it is that we were to understand, brothers and sisters. The Gospel of the Kingdom. He brought it. What the disciples were to understand and to learn and, to, of course, to understand the Gospel of the Kingdom. This is the testimony of the Saviour. This is His doctrine. You've not to just say, yeah, well, it's not that important we have to just leave it behind, we've got nothing to do with it. No. Brothers and sisters, it's the understanding of the testimony of the Saviour, it's the understanding of that doctrine, that gospel of the kingdom, which has brought us to and closer to our Saviour and to have our Saviour within. Carry on, Sister M, with let, please. With, with what? <laughs> uh, carry on with uh, chapter 6. Chapter uh, You've done the principles of the doctrine of the, sa the, the Saviour. If you carry on with let. Uh, chapter, go, it's right. chapter 6, verse 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let us go on unto perfection. Let us go on to perfection. So, it's leaving the principles of the doctrine of the Saviour, not ditching them, but going on to perfection. Doing what, Sister M? Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards the Father. Yeah, not... So, let us go into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. That's telling you, brothers and sisters, that if you don't have the Saviour, if you don't go into perfection, if you go and get baptised into the Saviour, to put on the Saviour, then what your works you're doing at the moment is dead. It's all dead works. You don't have the Saviour within. The foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards the Father. Yeah, so brothers and sisters, what we need is to understand our Saviour. What we need to understand is his testimony. Understand the gospel of the kingdom so that we can go on to this, what is called here in chapter 6, this perfection. Yeah, so that we can have the Father and the Son aboding with our vessel. Yeah? Yeah? So that we can have that within. And in order to have that within, you have to understand the truth. 
You have to understand the gospel of the kingdom. You have to understand the testimony. You have to understand the complete testimony from the written word. You have to understand it. Because only then, and only then, can you be baptised and receive and go on into perfection. Verse 2, Sister M. Of the doctrine of baptism. Yes. And of laying on of hands. Yes. And of resurrection of the dead. Yes. And of eternal judgment. All praises to the Father. That, brothers and sisters. Boof. There you go. Filled. Whoa. Father, Son, Boden, with the vessel. And, you know, what we're reading in this verse 2 is what the Father will get you to do. Verse 3, Sister M. And this we will do if the Father permit. And this we will do if the Father permit. Brothers and sisters, the Saviour's the way, the truth and the life. He brought the way. He brought the direction everybody to go was to go. He brought the doctrine. He brought the gospel of the kingdom. He brought the truth. He brought the word of the Father which he spoke. Yeah? And that, brothers and sisters, if we get that and you get that and you understand that and you understand through the scriptures, through the written word, the testimony of the Saviour, you can then be baptised and because you have known truth, you have done truth, you have accepted truth, you can be baptised into truth, receive spirit of truth within. It's not enough to know it. You've got to receive it spiritually from within. Father, Son, boding with the vessel. Spiritually from within. So that you then can be what? What it's saying in verse 3. Put out to works by the Father. Put out to works by the Father. If the Father permit. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit yeah. and have tasted the good word of the Father and the power the powers of the world to come, mm -hmm. if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of the Most High afresh and put him to an open shame. So this, this, brothers and sisters, this enlightenment, this taste of a heavenly gift, being made partakers of this word and have tasted the good word of the Father they have been made partakers of the word and have tasted the good word of the Father and the powers of the word the world to come they have been given they have been filled from within the Father and the Son has come and abode with the vessel. Brothers and sisters, the Son 
was glorified by the Father. He became the first of the resurrection. Glorified by the Father. Received of the Father. Glorified by the Father. Woof! So, brothers and sisters, we need to have the glorified Saviour woof, within who was glorified by the Father, who was made the first of the resurrection. He was the first fruits. For the, all the other fruits, that's people in the Saviour, to be coming after that, yeah? But if you receive that, and you fall away to renew them again to repentance. Verse 6. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of Man afresh. And put him to an open shame. So what does this mean? You receive the spiritual truth from within. And what do you do? You reject it. You decide you want to fall away, you don't want that. You decide to go back into the world. You decide to go back into the world completely, completely. You disregard the truth that you've been given, the word of truth within. You disregard it. You put the Son of the Most High to an open shame. And there is no comeback then for sins. There is no comeback if you decide to do that. No comeback. Yep. Carry on, Sister M. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh often upon it and bringing forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed Yes. Receiveth blessing from the Most yes. High. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. But that which beareth thorns and briars is re rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that, that can accompany salvation through, through although we thus speak. For the Most High is not unrighteous yes. to forget your work and labour of love which ye have showed towards his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Yeah, but, you know, brothers and sisters... But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Yeah, so you don't want to be putting the Saviour, brothers and sisters, to an open shame. Yeah, you know, having received the blessing, complete blessing from the Most High within. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But beloved, we are persuaded be better things of you. Yeah? For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labour of love. And you know, it is about giving of the Saviour through what the Father has given him, brothers and sisters, ministering to the saints, and do minister. Yeah, verse 11, Sister M. Um, oh, 12. 12, uh -huh. yeah, sorry, I didn't say verse uh -huh. 11, sorry. And we desire that every one of you to show the same diligence to the full assurance of your hope unto the end. Yeah, so you want to be when you are in the spirit, brothers and sisters, and you can be put out to works by the Father, if the Father permit, 
you want to this show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. And your desire is to go out really and, and do the works. That should be your desire to, to be doing that, to be those vessels to be used for the good works that have to be done. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Yeah, you've not to be slothful. You've not to sit back and relax and think that, uh, you know, uh, well, you know, I could... <laughs> I could be thinking about doing the work, but, you know, I'll maybe leave it at the moment. You know, I don't really think I need to do it at the moment. No, you've got to be full steam ahead, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. For when, For when the Most High made promise, promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Yep. <clears throat> Saying, surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply mm -hmm. thee. And he, and he multiplied Abraham's seed. Yeah. I mean, oh my goodness. Boy, did he multiply the ones that came after Abraham. They were like the sand of the sea, without number. They were with, it was without number. They were like the sand of the sea, you know. Uh, they were, and, of course, he was told they would be like the stars in heaven they were like the stars in heaven brothers and sisters carry on sister M. and so after so uh, and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise yeah and he was faithful he was faithful he took direction He took instruction because he believed completely in the word of the Father. He believed in the word of the Father, what he was telling him, and therefore through that believed in the Father. Yeah? And that was... What, Sister M, that was awarded to him for righteousness. That was awarded to him for righteousness. So it was. Yeah. So, obeying the word. Actually, brothers and sisters, is really what it's all about. Is knowing the word, understanding the word, and then it's having the word and obeying the word. Yeah, absolutely. Carry on, Sister M. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Mm -hmm. yep. Wherein the Most High willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, uh -huh. that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for the Most High to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Yeah. Whither 
the forerunner is for us entered, even the Saviour made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yeah, and you know, brothers and sisters, that's where we want to be. We want to be sure and steadfast in our Saviour. We know that without our Saviour, we have nothing. Without our Saviour, we have nothing and we will have nothing, brothers and sisters. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, that Messiah, even that Messiah, which we need, within, made a high priest forever, for ever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, chapter 7, Sister M. For this Melchizedek, King of Salem, priest of the Most High Power, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of Salem which is king of peace so he was the king of righteousness we have read about Melchizedek I read it out earlier on he was the king of Solomon and therefore the king of peace carry on sister M. So, Salem. Sal did I say Salem? Salem? You said Solomon. <laughs> did I say Solomon? Did I? Oh, all <laughs> oh, right. I didn't. Sure. Oh, king of <laughs> king of king of Salem. Or, <laughs> or, yeah, Sal Salem, brothers and sisters, king of Salem. Which, of course, and he was the king of peace. Yeah, carry on, sister. Him. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the Son of the Most High, abideth a priest continually. So it's telling you exactly what he was. He was without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of the Most High. Yeah? So that explains exactly, brothers and sisters, what we are reading about him. Yeah. An angel of the order of virtues. A celestial virtue of great grace. Who does for the heavenly angels. And virtues. And virtues. What the saviour does. For man. Abidest a priest. Continually. Yeah. Made like unto the son of man. And you know, brothers and sisters, the word of the Father was that angel. He was that angel. He was the word of the Father that was sent by the Father. Yeah? So that's why Melchizedek, that angel, but made like unto the Son of the Most High, abided a priest continually yeah that is how we understand yeah so Melchizedek was angelic tells you the son of the man son of the most high was angelic because he was that he was that angel that word of the father and as we know brothers and sisters that word, the word of the Father, that spirit, was what? He was what, brothers and sisters? That was the, the Saviour, our Messiah, our Shepherd King. He is the word of the Father that became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Yeah, verse 4, Sister M. Now, <coughs> now consider how great this man was 
unto whom even the, pa the pa patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Yeah, it shows you how great he was. Yeah, carry on, sister M. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, uh -huh. that is, of their brethren. Yeah, so the, the Levi's were given the office of the priesthood. They were the ones that were of Jacob, of the twelve tribes of Israel. They, they were the ones that were actually given. They were given the job of upholding the tabernacle. They were they were given the job of protection of the Ark of the Covenant, brothers and sisters. They were given the job of priesthood. They were given the the job of the givers of the law, brothers and sisters. Yeah. They you know and we know this only too well because Moses and his brother Aaron were Levitical. They were of the Levitical priesthood, brothers and sisters. Yep, carry on, sister M. Though they came they come out of the loins of Abraham. Yeah. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. Uh -huh. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Yes. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receive, receiveth them, of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. He liveth, yeah, carry on. And as I may say, say uh, and as I may so say, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. Uh -huh. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Yes, he was, he was not Levi at that particular point, as we know, brothers and sisters. Uh, Levi at that particular point had not come as of yet when uh, Abraham, you know, uh, met Melchizedek or vice versa, Melchizedek met him. Yep. Carry on, sister M. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood. Which it's not and it can't be. Carry on, sister them. For under it the people received the law. Yeah, because under it they received the law. Yeah. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Yeah, and you know, brothers and sisters, this is what the Saviour did. The Saviour brought through, as we know, the new covenant, which is having the law written in our hearts and our heads. He became the testator of that. We're going to read that as we also as in the book of Hebrews as well. So we're going to, to read that. But you know, through the old covenant, you know, if there was a law, that people could be saved by brothers and sisters. And I mean, what I mean by that is that if everybody was keeping the law, doing the law, doing all the law, statutes and commandments, in other words, not sinning, there would be no need if everybody had stuck to it, everybody had done it, everybody had kept it, even up to today, there would have been no need for the Saviour to do what he did. There would be no need for the Saviour to be a testator of the new covenant. There would have been no need for him to shed his blood 
to be that testator for this new covenant because to be the testator there had to be blood to be shed just as like for sins back in biblical times blood was shed for sins you know when 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 the children of Israel sinned it was the it was the blood of the animals that were to cover their sins but the saviour did it all that one man did it all for us he shed his blood to take all our sins on board brothers and sisters to bring us to the saviour because each and every single one is a sinner and we would all if we were under the old covenant be dead in our sins that's why we have the saviour that's why he did what he did that's why he took all our sins on board so that we could come back to him and have him, have the new covenant, have the saviour. He was the testator of it. And that man having with him, within that new covenant, the law written in our hearts and our heads. That, brothers and sisters, is what our saviour, our messiah, our shepherd king, did for all of us because if he hadn't we would be no way back to the father we would all be dead dead in our sins dead and buried gone brothers and sisters our saviour is our saviour for a reason because of what he did for us so, he became the end of the law for righteousness. That was our saviour. That is our saviour. Became the end of the law for righteousness. Now, brothers and sisters, are we saying then that law has been done away with? No! The Most High most certainly forbid that the Saviour did not do away with the law of the prophets. He came to fulfil the law. He became the fulfilling of the law. Yeah, that everybody needed to have within. Law written in our hearts and our heads. Spiritually. Woof hit, spiritually hit, saviour, father and, 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 and the son abode, combined abode, combined abode in the vessel, glorified saviour, people out there, brothers and sisters, do not see this, Our saviour, and I will say it again, when he was resurrected, went to be the father, he was glorified by who? The father. Woof, within the saviour, the father, within the saviour, glorified by the father, the saviour. So now, we have a glorified Father. We have a glorified Saviour with the Father within, with oh, with it all going on within. Therefore, that's how we understand. Is it not? If you understand my words and my sayings, as the Saviour said, His testimony, His gospel of the kingdom, yeah? from the Father, my Father and I, combined, combined, woof, vessel, in, abode. It's not difficult, brothers and sisters, it is not difficult at all to, to understand. Our Father, our Father, Sister M, our Father, 
brothers and sisters, is our creator. He is the father of all spirits. He's our creator. He's our father of all spirits. He is the most high power. There is nobody beside him. Yeah? Nothing was created but created by the Father. Everything that was created was created by our Father. Yeah? Because he's the Father of all spirits. All. The Father of all. Yeah? Brothers and sisters. So, when we understand the Saviour, quite simply, what is the Saviour telling us we need? We need to have the Father and I aboding with a vessel. He tells us that. Sister M, mm -hmm. was that not what the disciples had within? Uh-huh, yes. That, brothers and sisters, that is the truth. And nothing but the truth. And brothers and sisters, that is how we can all be baptised and receive. When you see the truth and you know the truth, and you understand the truth from the written word. You can be baptised. And you can receive. The truth. The word of truth. Within. The spirit of truth. The word of truth. And brothers and sisters, that really does clarify a lot. It. it really does. And it's and it's how we understand the scriptures. How we understand the spiritual understanding of the scriptures. Yeah, carry on, sister M. <clears throat> For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man giveth attendance at the altar. Yep. For it is evident that our Saviour sprang out of Judah of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Yeah, it was evident the Saviour sprang out of Judah. That was that was the lineage that re led to, of course, our Saviour. Mary and Joseph, they came together and we had brothers and sisters. Our Saviour, yeah. Carry on, Sister M. And it is yet more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. Yep. who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Not made, he was not made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Brothers and sisters, we are water, blood and spirit. We operate in, in a carnal spirit as well. We operate in the spirit of the flesh that wars with the pure spirit that we have of the Father. Yeah? You know, that we have spirit soul, the Father has breathed life into us. Spirit soul that the Father has breathed life into brothers and sisters you know that coming together 
of the man and the woman. That, that, you know, the opening of the Matrix, the whole situation that was going on, going on there, and it's the Father that gives life, that spirit, soul, and the Father, Father breathed life into it. Yeah? That whole, oh, it's so beautiful, Sister M, that whole situation that was going on in the, the woman's womb, in that, oh, that is the father. That's the father. The father gives life. The father gives life, brothers and sisters. That's why we are what? We are living beings. We walk, we talk, we... We're living. And all creation comes from the Father. Because he is the creator. And we are his creation. Yeah. And the, through the Saviour, you can have eternal life. Through the Saviour and in the Saviour, you can have eternal life. When that happens, brothers and sisters, when you are filled with that, and in this world, Nobody has been actually have that power within that glorified Saviour within the power the power that comes from that the power that comes from that and you will be witnesses to me you will be my witnesses. You will give my word. And that power within your hands, the hands, your hands, brothers and sisters, and it can be in your hands, but it's not you. It's not you. It's the power. Of the glorified Saviour. Woof! Within the vessel. Nurturing you. Guiding you. Instructing you. To. To do what Sister M? Fulfill. Prophecy. Brothers and sisters. That still has to be unfolded. Today. In this generation. How wonderfully beautiful. Is that. Would you not want to be part. Of that. Of course you would. Carry on sister M. For he testifieth. Thou art a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek. Yeah. For there is verily a, dis a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Mm -hmm. For the law made nothing perfect. It made nothing perfect. <clears throat> the law made nothing perfect. Because if you look at the situation today... Brothers and sisters, yes, there's a law. Yes, there's the law of statutes and commandments. Yes, we have to do the law. And yes, the Saviour has not done away with the law. 
But was the law perfect? No, because people in this world are all sinners. And they have all come short of what the Father would have expected of them. So, the law as it stood could not and cannot make everything perfect because, because you can't come from a, an imperfect situation to be perfect by the law. You see what I mean brothers and sisters? If you've broke the law you can't go back to being perfect. That makes you imperfect. So the law made nothing perfect. Carry on, sister M. What verse was that? Uh, it's um, but the bringing in in verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto the Father. Yes. And, <clears throat> and inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. Uh -huh. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath. By him that said unto him, the, the word swear and will not repent, thou art a priest for ever, after the order of Melchizedek. Uh -huh. By so much was the Saviour made a surety of a better testament. The Saviour was made a surety of a better testament. What the, the law did not do for people because it didn't make them perfect brothers and sisters. That's where our Saviour came in. He was the surety of a better testament that through and in him we could be saved even though we were sinners, even though they're dirty sinners, even though they're, there's terrible sinners out there. We could be made perfect. We could be made perfect through the Saviour. Yeah? We could be made perfect through and in the Saviour. He was the surety of a better testament. Yeah? This new testament. Through repentance, understanding the Saviour, repentance, baptism, receiving, being born again, receiving. This new covenant, the Saviour within. Lord it in our hearts and our heads. That we sin no more. Having the Saviour within, Sister Aim, that you sin no more because you have been given the authority and, and understanding within your vessel and you have the power within as well. Brothers and sisters, he was the testator of a better testament. That new covenant, that better testament, brothers and sisters, yeah. Carry on, Sister M. Uh, verse 23, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. Yeah. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. He doesn't change. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the, up the uttermost that come unto the Father by him. He can save the uttermost. He can save them. He can absolutely save them. The Saviour that can save them, that come unto the Father by him. And in him, brothers and sisters, by him. Why? 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 You may ask. Carry on, Sister M. 
seeing he ever liveth to make intercession because for Because he's the intercessor. He is the intercessor between us and the Father. He is the go-between between us and the Father. We need to have him. And if we have him, we have what, brothers and sisters? We have the Most High Power. We have the Father. But we can't get to the Father but through the Son. We cannot get to the Father any other way but through and in his Son. Because by him, he is the go-between, between us and the Father. So by him, we can absolutely have our Father, brothers and sisters. And the Father has set that down for us. <coughs> yeah? The Father has set that down for us, brothers and sisters. That is the way it is. And you can't get into the kingdom any other way. No other way will get you straight into the kingdom. Boof! Saviour. You are my faithful and my loyal servant. Come into my kingdom and I will serve you. Come into my kingdom. You are my faithful and loyal servant. Yeah? So, we need the Saviour. Can't get to the Father any other way. You can try. But if Sister M, anybody out there of the woman's seed, any man or woman out there that disregards the Saviour, does not accept the Saviour, does not want the Saviour and his understanding, brothers and sisters, you cannot get to the Father and therefore... You cannot have the Father. And how do you expect to be in the Saviour's kingdom to come? Yeah, carry on, Sister M. F uh, Verse 20 26, yeah. Uh -huh. For such a high priest became became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, yep. who needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. Yes. For this he did once, when he offered up yes. himself. Yes, and that's what the Saviour did. The priests, brothers and sisters, offered these sacrifices for sins over and over and over and over again. This man, this saviour, our messiah, our shepherd king, he offered himself once. And shed his blood. And that was for all of us. All of us. Brothers and sisters. He took all our sins on board. For us to come back to him. And have him. Within the new covenant equals the Saviour, equals the law written in our hearts and our heads. Yeah? Carry on, Sister M. 
For the law maketh men high priests, which have an infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son who is consecrated for evermore. Yeah, and of course, <coughs> the law, and you know, this is important, brothers and sisters. The Saviour didn't do away with the law. The law stats and commandments, they still stand. The law does stand. The Saviour tells us, I didn't do away with the laws and the prophets. It's the law, brothers and sisters, still stands. But you can't be saved by just completely deciding after sinning to do the law and then expecting to go right to the very end and get in the kingdom. You cannot get into the kingdom that way, brothers and sisters. Yes, the law is important. Yes, when you understand the law, you should be doing the law. But we cannot, brothers and sisters, get into the kingdom without having the Son. Because it's the Son that brings the law. He brings the law. You see, the Son brings the law. When you have the Son, and you have the Son within, through the understanding of the Son, through repenting, through receiving the Son within, you get the law written in your hearts and your heads, and you have the Son within. So you have it all going on, within the vessel, and that is what you need. You need to know the law, understand the law, but you need the Son to be within, because He is, He became the law. He became the law that everybody needed, because He was the testator for the new covenant which equals the law written in our hearts and our heads. Yeah? So, we're going to go on to chapter 8, brothers and sisters, and I'm going to carry on. Now, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Yeah? This new covenant that's been brought through is superior, brothers and sisters. This new covenant, the Saviour being the testator of the new covenant, it is the superior covenant that everybody needs to have. Yeah? who is set in the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Yeah? A minister of the sanctuary, and of the true tabernacle, which the word our Saviour pitched, and not man. You know, so he is what everyone needs. He is what everyone needs within. Yeah? We need to be having that, our Saviour, the law written in our hearts and our heads. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore it is of a necessity that this man had something also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of the Most High when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the medi mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Hmm. 
So, brothers and sisters, we need to have the Saviour within. He needs to be within us, brothers and sisters. That's the better covenant. The new covenant, which was based on better promises. For verse 7, for if it first, the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So, he's a testator of a better covenant, which is based on better promises. For if that first had been faultless, then there should be no place, or there should have been no place for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the word, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So the Saviour will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Because that wasn't perfect. It didn't make anybody perfect, brothers and sisters. But in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. And they didn't, brothers and sisters. They didn't continue in his covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the word, because they didn't continue in his covenant. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the word, I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a power and they, a power, and they will be to me a people. After those days, that failed, that didn't work, saith the word, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be unto them a power and, and they shall be unto me a people. Having the Saviour within, brothers and sisters, baptised into the Saviour to put on the Saviour, yeah? Or to, as, as we know, to understand, to have the law written in our hearts and our heads. That's the new covenant that's based on better promises. I will be to them a power and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbour and every man his brother saying no the word for all shall know me from the least to the greatest and they shall not teach every man his neighbour and every man his brother saying know the word for all shall know me from the least to the greatest for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Mm -hmm. And in he saith a new covenant he hath made, the first old now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Yeah. So, we, brothers and sisters, are not the ones to be teaching. We are not, brothers and sisters. It's the Saviour within. It's our Saviour within, brothers and sisters. He gives us the law written in our hearts and our heads. You know, and it's the Saviour, brothers and sisters, 
that gives to the people. It's our saviour that does that. Yeah. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Yeah. In that he saith a new covenant he 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 made the first old now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So brothers and sisters we need to have that new covenant within. We need to have our Saviour, yeah? He is the testator of the new covenant. We need to have him. We need to, brothers and sisters, have the law written in our hearts and our heads. Yeah, and that, brothers and sisters, that uh, does bring us to the end of this lesson, apart from that we're going to finish with a prayer, and for this lesson brothers and sisters uh, I have decided to for us to finish with Psalm 3 Psalm chapter 3 brothers and sisters so if you want to be putting this up to the Father uh, with us and do it all together if you put your hands out brothers and sisters and we'll put the, this prayer up to the Father together if you'd like to do that brothers and sisters yeah Word how are they increased that trouble me many are they that rise up against me many there be which say of my soul there is no help for him in the Most High, Selah. But thou, O Word, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Word with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. I laid me down to sleep, and I awaked, for the word sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousand of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O word, save me, O my father, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the word. Thy blessings is upon thy people. Selah. Thank you, Father, for those words, your words, and the deepness of your words that we get brothers and sisters in the Psalms because brothers and sisters we get understanding of the end times we get understanding of end time prophecy through and in these Psalms and boy brothers and sisters it is deep. So be it. So, so be, be it. it. So, brothers and sisters, with 
with that that brings us to the end of this part part 66 and brothers and sisters we will be back in due course uh, with part 67 which will absolutely uh, take us from chapter 9 right through to uh, the the end of the book of Hebrews so until then brothers and sisters when we come back for part 67 until then stay well stay safe and all that remains for me to say is bye for now brothers and sisters bye for now brothers and sisters <laughs>